Good morning. The Lord be with you. This is an exciting day to be in worship. Whether you are here in person or joining online, I am so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning, and I hope it will be a blessed time of worship for you today. For those of you who are here in person, a reminder about our safety protocols. We do require masks and uh, distancing as best you can, but masks for sure anytime uh, there are children present. And we have lots of kids here today, which is exciting. So please uh, keep your masks on at all times. We thank you for understanding. If you have a prayer request you would like lifted up this morning, there are lots of ways that you can do that. For those of you here in person, there is a QR code in your announcements insert. You can scan that and that will send it directly to me. You can also text it to me if you have my number. If you're joining online, you can share it in the chat on Facebook or Zoom, or we will have a time for sharing later in the service today. Christmas is coming. That's why we're all rushing around like crazy. Uh, on Christmas Eve, it's Friday, and we have two services here, and all are invited to participate. At 4 o'clock, we will be having our Happy Birthday Jesus family-friendly worship service downstairs in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, this is an interactive service, uh, uh, singing. There's going to be a craft. It'll be a good time. All are invited to that. And then we will have our traditional evening service, preludes starting at 7.30 and worship at 8 o'clock. Uh, and all are invited. There's lots of music at that one, too. Uh, as I said last week, both services include candle lighting, but only one has cake. So if that is a determining factor for you, you can guess which one. But all are invited, and for those who join online, it's the same link or the same information as on Sunday mornings. The church office will be closing at 11.45 on Friday, and then... That's it, right? No more for the rest of the year. So if you have anything you need for melon, if it's Christmas related, it can wait until January. Or if it's not Christmas related, it can wait until January. Uh, she'll get some good time off. And uh, the final day to get your contributions to count, is that next Sunday? Okay, so next Sunday, the 26th, if you want your contributions to count on your 2021 giving statement, they need to be in by next Sunday. Anything that comes in after that will be counted in 2022. And offering envelopes are available on the table in the overflow area. Uh, check your number because it may have changed. You sign it out. If you're going to visit someone who does not regularly make it to church, feel free to sign theirs out as well. Today we are also taking the Christmas Joy Offering. This is one of four special offerings of the PCUSA. This uh, offering is divided two ways. 50% goes to scholarships and funding for Presbyterian affiliated schools for racial ethnic students. And the other 50% goes into the church employee assistance program to help church workers, pastors, musicians, uh, administrators in times of need. So for example, uh, my friend Leanne is a pastor in Nebraska, and this week her husband had a routine surgery and then had a stroke, a massive stroke, 46 years old. And he's recovering, but she said, she posted, please give to the Christmas Joy offering. That's what that offering is for. They have GoFundMe and other things, but there are always fees taken out of those. The Christmas Joy offering helps real people in real times of need. So if you haven't given already, we invite you to generously give. If you're here in person, you have some information as well as an envelope. You can also give online, um, but it's a wonderful offering, so please consider that. Chancel flower orders for 2022 are now available, uh, and almost most dates are open still. So you can call the church office, and Ellen will uh, track that for you. And uh, let's see, next Sunday, uh, it's going to be the 26th. Everyone's going to be full and sleepy. So come to worship in your PJs. I'm coming to worship in pajamas. It's fine. Casual. Come as you are. We're going to sing lots of Christmas carols and learn about the 12 days of Christmas. So everybody is invited to casual worship next Sunday. 
The chancel flowers this morning, it's different than what's printed in the bulletin. The chancel flowers this morning were donated with love by Susan Catanzarito in memory of her mother, Martha Barber. And I want to say thank you to everybody helping with worship today. As always, thank, grateful for Nancy. She's over there. She went over there. Uh, our technical director this morning is Tom Graham. Our liturgist today is Lauren McElhaney. We have two special music pieces today. The prelude uh, comes from Pam Lentz, and our anthem today comes from Tommy Lee Killian. She is a 10th grader at Lincoln Park Performing Arts Charter School, and so she will provide our anthem and also lead us in hymn singing today. Thank you. And our Advent candles this morning will be lit by the Bullinger family, and we're also celebrating a baptism, so it's a great day to worship. Are there any other announcements to lift up this morning? Seeing none, let us turn to God. Uh, let prepare our hearts to worship God. We are seeking deeper faith, a place to belong, the feeling that God is here with us. We are seeking joy that overflows, the movement of the spirit, a hand to hold. We are seeking the freedom to be, the courage to love, and the conviction to act. We are seeking, but here in this space, we are found by God's love. 
God's love is like an open door, the street light that guides us home, a warm bed to fall into, a table with room for you, the sun that streams through the windows, a home for you and me, for neighbors and strangers, for family and friends. Hear these words from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love has revealed amongst us in this way. God sent God's only Son into the world so that we might live through him. So we light, again, the candle of hope. In peace. And joy. And today we light the candle of love to remind us that God's love is a home for all. Let us pray. Gracious God, in love you open wide the doors and welcome us into your presence, saints and sinners alike. You spread a table before us filled with the richest fare, a feast of love and mercy. We come with joy to meet you here. May the Spirit inspire us to truly love. Amen. Mary's world was turned upside down with the visit from an angel. And this is a moment that we can relate to, kind of, because in the last year and a half, our world has been turned upside down more than once. When those moments come, we hope to respond with grace, but more often than not, fear can get the best of us. So today, as we turn to God in prayer, we ask for God's guidance and grace in the places we need it most. Let us join together in our unison prayer of confession. God of safe spaces, we wish we were more like Mary, who in the face of great change went and sought help. Too often we wait silently for the world to change around us instead of speaking up for the things we need. Forgive us for failing to care for ourselves the way you would care for us. Give us the courage to be more like Mary. Hear this prayer, O oh God, and hear us as we lift our silent confessions before you now. Amen. 
Hear our prayers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, even if we miss the person standing on our doorstep, even if we fail to care for ourselves the way God would care for us, even if we forget and ignore, turn away and shut down, God still loves us. There is nothing we can do to lose God's love. So rest in this promise. If we get lost, we will be found. If we mess up, we will be forgiven. If we withhold love, God is still lavish in loving us. We are claimed, we are loved, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Knowing that we are forgiven does bring us peace, and so at this time you are invited to share the peace of Christ with those around you. Those of you who are here, feel free to turn around and wave, and the peace of Christ be with you at home as well. In place of our children's message today, we're doing something really special. So you guys can stay in your seats, but I want to make sure you can see, okay? Because you're going to have a special part later in the baptism, okay? So listening ears. Friends, hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And, oh, yes, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear also these words from Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all, and through all and in all. Obeying the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, yeah, he's excited, and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and shows us that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. On behalf of the session, I present Cain Michael Bollinger, beloved child of Morgan and Tyler Bollinger, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Okay, Morgan and Tyler, do you desire that Cain be baptized? If so, say, I do. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to him? Do you? Okay, kids, you ready for this? Sorry, we're all goofy here. So today we celebrate that Cain is officially becoming a member of the church and even though we are not all related to him, we are brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ. And we love and care for one another. So I have a couple questions for the children specifically. And we have kids at home as well. I want to hear you yell the answers too. We want to hear them here. Okay? So when you answer these questions, you make a promise to God and you make a promise to Cain. Okay, you ready? I want to hear you answer really loud. 
Will you help Cain remember that God loves him and we love him? If so, say, I do. That wasn't very loud. <laughs> Will you share the stories of Jesus with him? If so, say, I do. Perfect. Do we, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Cain by word and deed with love and prayer? If, say, if so, say we do. Will we encourage him to know and follow Christ and be a faithful member of his church? If so, say we will. <laughs> Through the sacrament of baptism, we enter into a covenant that God established in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, strengthens us to resist evil, and nurtures us in love. And through this covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. So, Morgan and Tyler, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn away from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. This is the tough one. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Got it. Will you be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? Please rise in body or spirit as we profess our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and to the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us join together in prayer. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea, into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, God, for the waters of baptism. In them we are buried with Christ in his death. From them we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through them, we are reborn by the power of your Holy Spirit. It's distracting. You're so precious. Send your Holy, gracious God, send your Spirit to move over the water that it may be the fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Raise this child to new life and graft him into the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Cain that he may have the strength to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you be all praise, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. All right, you ready for the fun part? Yeah. Okay, come here. You wanna touch this? Yeah, you wanna touch it? Oh, yeah. Cain, Michael, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
You are a beloved child of God. Welcome to the family. He didn't cry? Yay! Child of the covenant, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Thanks be to God. O Lord, uphold Cain by your Holy Spirit. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of guidance and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the reverence of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Cain, you have been received into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church through baptism. I know, those are big words. Those are big words. It means you're part of the family. Yeah. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you have become a member of the household of God to share with us in the ministry of Christ and the priesthood of all believers. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you. Let us welcome them one more time. And I have just a couple things for you. There's your certificate of baptism. Here's a story, water come down, the day you were baptized, and a little Bible, which I love. Congratulations. Good job. Yeah, good job. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to your scripture today, hoping that it will feel a bit like an open door, like Elizabeth welcoming Mary, like coming home. We want to find sanctuary here, to breathe easier just hearing these words. Hover close to us now, we pray. Open the door to our hearts so that we might find sanctuary in your words. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Our first gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through, 46 through 55, from the New Revised Standard Version. This is Mary's song of praise. Listen now for God's word to us. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has so shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in, re in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Child is born to us this night in peace. 
Tommy Lynn and Pam and Nancy. We continue in the Gospel of Luke, but we're actually jumping back a little bit. Uh, so we'll be reading from chapter 1, verses 39 through 45, also from the New Revised Standard Version. So Lauren read Mary's song of praise, her Magnificat, and now we're backing up to what happened just before that, to Mary's visitation to Elizabeth, what causes her to break out in song. Listen once again for God's word to us. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you make promises to us each and every day. You promise to love us, to protect us to bring us home. Like Mary, may we trust these promises. Even in the midst of fear and anxiety and confusion, may we also be filled with faith. Open our ears and our hearts and our minds to your voice and your voice alone. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered here be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's almost time, writes biblical commentator Debbie Thomas. It's almost time. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, as the hectic month of December pulls us ever closer to that sacred story we know and cherish, the story of a census, an inn, a manger, an infant. It's tempting to leap ahead, but don't, she begs. Please don't. Instead, she says, linger here a little while longer. Linger here on this threshold, in this liminal space, at this ancient doorway where two pregnant women caress each other's bellies and laugh, marvel, dance and sing, linger here as swollen bodies, aching backs, waves of nausea, and wild fetal gymnastics reveal a savior who enters the world womb-sized. Linger here, she says, with Elizabeth, with Mary, the messenger and the message and celebrate the fleshy presence of our God. This story of the visitation of Mary rushing to see Elizabeth is one of the most beautiful in scripture. You have a young teenage girl and a postmenopausal woman, neither of whom should be pregnant, yet both miraculously are. They comfort and strengthen each other. They are different generations, different life stories, yet united by this unusual bond of being called to carry holy children. They are an unlikely pairing, which makes a lot of sense. So Mary, of course, was stunned by the news that she received from the angel Gabriel that God wanted her to bring the Messiah into the world. She was a person of faith, but she was also just a girl. She had not yet consummated her marriage to Joseph. She feared not only gossip and disapproval, but a literal stoning to death. 
And in spite of all of this, in the presence of the angel, in shock and awe, Mary quietly consented. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Externally, she was calm, but internally, she was agitated. She needed someone to talk to. She needed a place to go where she could feel safe as she processed all of this. She needed sanctuary. This past summer, for those of you who are here, you may remember, we spent a few weeks talking about this concept of sanctuary. Far greater than this room in which some of us worship, a sanctuary is a place or a space where you feel welcome, safe, free. A sanctuary is where the ordinary and the holy meet. Sanctuary is anywhere God's love dwells freely and abundantly. Mary knew that she could find that in Elizabeth. So she goes with, goes with haste to see her, not her mom, not her sister or a cousin, not a rabbi. She goes to see her relative, Elizabeth, her kinswoman. A scripture is unclear at exactly what the relationship is between Mary and Elizabeth, but I like to envision Elizabeth as Mary's favorite auntie, the one who, uh, by birth or by choice, is the one you go to when you don't want to talk to your parents about something, the one with whom you can ask the awkward questions and not face judgment, the one who will bail you out when you find yourself in trouble. So full of confusion, anxiety, and fear, this is who Mary goes to see. She rushes to see her dear Elizabeth. And in her arms, on the threshold of a house which is not her own, she found sanctuary. She found home. Mary ran to this person who she knew would understand best. They were both first-time mothers both pregnant through divine intervention, both carrying children that would literally change the world. Mary trusted that Elizabeth was safe and that in her home she would find refuge. But just as Mary found what she needed in Elizabeth, Elizabeth found what she didn't know she needed in Mary. As Mary and Elizabeth mirror for each other the tangible, physical evidence of God's presence in their lives, Debbie Thomas writes, their worship emerges in shared communion, shared fear, shared consolation, and shared hope. Mary is the one who sought sanctuary in Elizabeth, but they both found it in one another. The word sanctuary comes from the Latin word sanctuarium. Now, any word ending in arium means a container, a box. So like an aquarium is a container for aquatic life. So arium is container, and sanct, sanct, comes from sanctus, which means holy. And so a sanctuary is a container for the holy a place where God's love dwells. And Mary had not just God's love dwelling within her, but she had the literal living God growing in her womb. And even John, in his prenatal understanding, recognized this, and he leaped for joy. He recognized the divine within Mary. She was literally a sanctuary for God. And while we are not bearers of God incarnate ourselves, each one of us does have the divine within us, too. We were created in God's image. We were saved through Jesus' death and resurrection. 
We have been gifted with the Holy Spirit, which guides and inspires everything we do, if we so allow. When we accept and embody God's love, we each become a sanctuary. And when we come together in worship, study, hospitality, fellowship, and prayer, we find refuge. We find strength and love. We are transformed. We see the image of God in each other's faces, hands, and feet, in our hope, in our fear, in our uncertainty, and in our surrender, blessings happen. The spaces we create together shimmer with the mysterious presence of God. Laughter becomes holy, and so do tears. Time bends, allowing us, even for a few trembling moments, to perceive the world as God perceives it, bruised and beautiful, raw and redeemed. So yes, friends, it's almost time. It's almost time to encounter the divine in a laboring woman's gasps and cries, in a frantic father's search for shelter, in angels' songs and shepherds' awe, in celestial majesty, in a small baby who probably sounds a lot like this one, born in a manger. It's almost time, but we're not quite there yet. So linger here for a moment on the sacred threshold, seeing the divine in one another, providing sanctuary for each other, and know that within a sh without a shadow of a doubt, God's love dwells within you, each of you. May we unashamedly share that love with others. Thanks be to God. Amen. Elizabeth offered her home, her arms, and her joy. She offered her affirmation and confidence. Elizabeth offered everything she had when Mary showed up at her door. Part of our call as people of faith is to give when and where we can. So today, we are invited to be a little more like Elizabeth, giving generously, trusting that God will take our gifts and build a better world here. For those here in person, the offering plates are found on the tables by the doors. For those joining virtually, you are invited to mail your gifts to the church, drop them off during the week, or give electronically. Please rise in body or spirit as we join together in our unison prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give our gifts for the seekers, for those who need sanctuary, for those who build sanctuaries, and for those who have lost sanctuary, and for those who find sanctuary all over the place. Use these gifts to bring us closer to home. With joy and hope in our hearts, we pray. Amen. During the season of Advent, we become even more aware of how beautiful words can bring us closer to God. You are now invited into a time of prayerful meditation and contemplation as you hear Come On Home by the Reverend Sarah R. Speed. We all know the feeling, the shaky ground, sinking sand, water is rising, sun is fading feeling that makes steady breathing an entire miracle and holding back tears a marvel in and of itself. 
And when those days come, I call my parents, and I call my church, and I call my friends, and they say in unison what God has said from the very beginning, which is, come on home. Is there anything more healing than an open door? If you're seeking sanctuary, if the waters are rising, listen. It may be hard to hear, but God is always saying, come on home. As a community of faith, we share our joys and our concerns with one another so that we may continually be in prayer for and with one another. This morning, I do ask for prayers for my friend Leanne and her husband, Mike Masters, as he is recovering from this stroke. Uh, thankfully, he's young, and so things are going well. Uh, but they have, they have two children, one of whom is autistic and is having a hard time uh, understanding what's going on with daddy. And Leanne is also a pastor, and it's the week of Christmas. And so we pray for her church as well. We also lift up uh, the family of Jim Morrow. Jim was a bell ringer here at Hill Church, and he uh, passed away this week as a result from injuries sustained in a machinery accident. And so we pray for them in their grief. We lift up uh, our friend Allie, who joins us online, uh, and her family. They're traveling to Florida for Christmas, and so we pray for safe travels for them and for anyone who is traveling for this holiday season. We remember those we love living with cancer, and we especially continue to pray for Lynn Gehring, Edna Mae Knauer, Burt Brewster, Kelly Kramlick, Bob Ray, Tim Rafferty, Shirley Brown, and Mary Padicky. And Mary's white count was not good today, and so she could not be here for Cain's baptism. Thankfully, she's joining online, uh, but we continue to pray. Yeah, we pray for Grandma, right? Yeah. <laughs> we also remember those we love living with chronic health conditions, and we especially lift up David Brady and Aaron Stobert. We remember those uh, who are struggling with COVID-19. Today, we especially pray for Jack and Sharon Montag, who have been diagnosed with COVID and are home recovering. We continue to pray for the hospital staff. Uh, nurses and doctors and all staff as they face the stress of another surge. We remember those living with chronic illness, be it mental or physical. We pray for those struggling with addiction. We remember those who are lost and lonely in this season. We pray for those who are living in assisted living centers and nursing home facilities, especially Ida Miller, Don and Phyllis Lane, Audrey Nosikoff and Ruth McKinney. Uh, today is also a day of great joy. For one, we had a baptism, which is always exciting. You know, away in a manger, the little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. That's clearly not true because he was a baby. So um, very excited to have a baby with us in this season of Christmas. And we also give thanks today. Uh, last night, David Dougherty got a heart. Uh, it, it's, it's been a roller coaster uh, the last 72 hours or so, but Dennis just texted me. He said he's there with David right now. He's still intubated, at least for a little bit. Everything is going well. He said he's semi-awake and aware that he's here. He raised his eyebrows and fingers acknowledging his presence. And uh, Ray and Loretta are on their way to Philly now. So we give thanks uh, for uh, renewed life. For David, we give thanks for Dennis and his, he was sitting in the waiting room all night last night uh, by himself. No TV. What waiting room doesn't have a TV? So we, we give thanks for them, prayers for Ray and Loretta, and we also pray for the family of the donor. With great joy for the Doherty family comes great grief for another family. And so we continue to lift them up as well. Are there other joys or concerns to lift up this morning? Thank 
you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Logan and Matt both texted a joy that it was my birthday, and I didn't say it. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> Thank you. It was one of the best birthdays I've had in a while. Thank you. Other joys or concerns to lift up this morning? Seeing none, let us turn to God in prayer. Holy God, our prayers are often an act of seeking. We seek you. We seek belonging. We seek sanctuary, and we know deep in our bones that if we knock, we will find. So today we pause our seeking to simply give thanks. Thank you for the Elizabeths in our lives, the ones who have been there when we have needed them most, the ones who have blessed us with joy, allowing our happiness to take up space, the ones who have opened the door for us and ushered us in. And we thank you not only for the Elizabeths in our lives, but also for the strangers who have cared for us, for those older and wiser who paved the way, for individuals who share no relation to us, but love us like family. Our lives are undoubtedly better because of them. Gracious God, we pray for those without an Elizabeth in their life, for those who do not have a hand to hold in the dark or a front porch to show up on. We pray for those in life transitions who carry fear and anxiety alone. We pray for all who know loneliness in the face of these hardships. God, wrap your arms around these individuals that we named here this morning and all those that we hold in our hearts. Circle back again and again, dwelling tenderly in the wounds of their hearts until healing might be found. Thank you, God, for being our safe place. Thank you for always welcoming us home. Thank you for coming to us as one of us to save us. With joy in our hearts, we lift these prayers to you, O God, and we pray the words of your son, Jesus, the words he taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing together. The song is in your insert for those of you here in person.
Don't forget to join us on Christmas Eve. We would love to see you in person or have you join us online. And next Sunday, come as you are for a wonderful time of singing and joy. Friends, as you leave this service, your service begins. Comfort the homesick, open your doors to others, seek sanctuary, be brave enough to go home by another way, and remember that here in God's house all are welcome, welcome, so come back soon. In the name of our foundation, God, Spirit, and Son, go in peace, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that will never let you go and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. Mm -hmm.